It's very windy. <laughs> but we are going now for a new journey. Yeah. Okay, we are at the church, uh, cathedral. cathedral, yes, in Porto. It's crowded here, and we have both our credentials over that. You need a pilgrim's passport, Credencial de Peregrino, that shows you are a pilgrim to get access to the albergues along the way. Credencial de Peregrino? Two. Thank you. On the first page, you fill in your personal data as the passport is personal. You then collect stamps that you find at bars, restaurants, churches or hostels along the way, so you can show that you have walked all the way to Santiago de Compostela. It will be a nice memory when you get home after finished your hike, and it is a must if you want to pick up a Compostela at the pilgrim's office in Santiago. Porto has this old town. Small restaurants, trams, old buildings and monuments to visit or look at. So if you don't have visited Porto before, I suggest you take time to walk around in the city before you start your hike. If you have the cathedral at your back, you then go to the left, across the small square to get to the Senda Littoral Way. And if you want to start along the coastal route, or the inland route, Camino Central, you walk to the stairs on the right. The coastal and the central route merge at the beginning. We choose to start walking down the stairs to the Douro River that we followed out to the sea. It was neither too hot nor too cold to walk under the sun that day, but it was very windy. We visited some restaurants, studied beautiful buildings and took some pictures along the way. After walking 15 kilometers, we arrived at Matachinos. We were a little bit tired after traveling the day before, so we went to the service center. At the service center, we were told that there were very busy times at the hostels, but they were very helpful and gave us a map where they marked out hostels where we could try to get a bed. At the first hostel, we met two women from US who were a bit stressed. One had pre-booked a bed at the hostel while the other had not pre-booked anything and now the hostel was fully booked. She had called around to several hostels and hotels before she found a room for 90 euro about 10 kilometers away. She was going to take a taxi there and warn us that we probably wouldn't find anywhere to stay in Matachinos. We were wandering around aimlessly in the outskirts of Matachinos when Camilla saw a sign for a hostel. We rushed our steps only to find that the hostel was fully booked. 
But I think the owner saw that we was tired because suddenly she said that she had a small room in the basement that they had no intention of renting out. But if we paid 77 euro, we could stay there for one night without hesitation. We booked the room. This is our hostel for tonight. Yeah, bathroom and shower. And here we will sleep. Small place in the basement actually. <laughs> but it's good. Uh, 77 euro. We are still in the outskirts of uh, Porto. So I think it's a little bit more expensive than I expected. Uh, the first day is over and uh, we didn't uh, walk uh, so far this morning because it took us time to go to the cathedral by the credential and uh, then we hiked along the seaside but we will start again tomorrow good morning clock is uh, almost nine and we started day two. I think we was a bit uh, tired after the traveling. Uh, we, we traveled from Sweden to Lisbon and then to Porto by train. I think we are slow starters in the morning because even though we had been on the roads before, it takes some time to adjust to the life with a backpack on the back. It took us uh, some time to walk out from Porto to this place. It was almost uh, 15 kilometers from our hostel. And a lot of people, because it was Saturday and uh, many tourists around the cathedral. We hadn't booked any hostels and we have not pre-booked anything uh, yet. Um, we will see how it works out. It's almost three years since we last was out on the roads. Many hikers choose to start in Matosinos, where the airport in Porto is nearby. And when the first day of hiking is mostly in the city or suburbs of Porto, if you start at the Catrillo. I don't think the road is so fancy yet. It's like going in the industrial area. <laughs> Time for our breakfast. Yes. Yes. So this is the surroundings. You find a spot under a large tree. As many other routes, there are several options also on the Camino Portuguese. In this case, you can walk along the Atlantic coast, the Camino Coastal, or you can choose to walk the inland route, Camino Central. Both start in Porto. To make it a little more complicated, you can then also choose to walk the Senda Littoral Way, or the Spiritual Route, which is an alternative part of the other two I just mentioned. So I think you will walk somewhere between 240 to 280 kilometers, depending on your choices. Time for breakfast. Yes, we are hungry. Yes. <laughs> what in the box? <laughs> uh, bread. Yes, yes. Ah, bread. Ah, chorizo. And this one's for ah, this you. Is espresso, this is mine. <laughs> <laughs> give it to me. <laughs> oh, croissant, give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and banana. banana. Okay. <laughs> and you have something to drink also? Yes. yes. Chocolate. Chocolate with Chocolate. high protein. <laughs> now we will eat. <laughs> so, what do we have in our backpacks? Let us show you. This time we weighed everything even our home keys and credit cards. And this was the result. I carried 5.8 kilo in my backpack and Camilla carried 5.3 kilo. 
The things we carried on our body in pockets and money belts weighed 2.3 kilo and 2.1 kilo at the traveling date. Then you have to add weight for snacks and water. And I also carried 3 kilo of technical equipment this time. Coming down to the sea. You can see the waves. Our plan this time was to hike the Camino Portuguese from Porto along the coast up to Matosinos. We didn't know then that this was a part of the Sendalit Railway. Then connect to the Camino coastal route and continue up to Santiago de Compostela. After that we planned to have a few days of vacation together before Camilla had to go back home while I should go to saint jean pierre de port in France to walk and film the entire Camino Francis. It's fantastic here in Portugal, the sea and the nature. Uh, uh, what? What that? We mostly walk on wooden walkways and there were many family activities and competitions that day. And the restaurants were well frequented by the locals. Nossa cup preparam as equipas Bulbis e equipa Escola de Rugby do Porto. For the next match on the quarterfinals cup. It was swimming weather. But the temperature in the sea was still a little too cold and the waves too high when the wind now was so strong. So we refrained to take off our clothes and jump into the water. So if you don't like the sea you can swim in a pool. By the sea. <laughs> <laughs> Hour maybe uh, we have seen a few hikers, not so many, and uh, it's paved ground that we walk on or wood actually. Oh, come on. As usual, we only had a rough frame for our hike. We never study everything in detail before we walk. You can say that we let the adventure guide our experience. We like to have it that way. story goes. <laughs> now it is sand to walk in and we have at least four cake left. So I hope this is the So at the end of the day we were blasted with sand from the beaches. We were told by the receptionist who checked us in at the hostel we found that it would continue to be similar weather, roads and views for the next coming days. When we were studying the map, we discovered that uh, we could cross over to the inland route, Camino Central, 
by following a road from Villa do Condes to Rates. So after eating and walking around in a small town, we decided to leave the coastal route to avoid more sand in our mouth the next day. We both felt like we were missing something. Of course it was beautiful and energizing to walk along the sea, but we missed the forest, the fields and the historical parts that we experienced before when we hiked the inland trail in 2019. You can say we were missing the Camino feeling we were looking for. Here's where hostel for today. A really a nice place. I can really recommend this. Uh, we just arrived at uh, Nalberg. And uh, I will show you what I do normally when I arrive at the Alberg. You know how it is with bedbugs. I normally look here if there are some black things. Then I lift this up and look under how it looks. If it's any black thing, I also look at this edge and under and I look under this and as you see here it's very clean and good so then it uh, may not be any bed bugs in this bed I normally also look in uh, two different ends of the bed maybe in there that's how I do and remember don't put your backpack on the bed because then you put some dirt or maybe some bugs or something you bring with you and don't put the bag under the bed if something fell down from the bed into your bag i will show you a little bit about the ho the hostel we stayed at this time here we have this key card to open our door and it's like in a hotel. You have to put it there to get electricity. And then we have six beds to share. Normally, they don't have mixed rooms in this hostel. But uh, today it was not fully booked. So we get a room for ourselves. Mm, a very big one. And very big one. Mm. And uh, here they have towels. We have extra blankets if it should be cold. It's fantastic, actually. Uh, a lot of this. It's perfect for me because I have to charge all my equipment. So now we have to shower and wash our things. And then we go out and see if we can have something to drink. Maybe eat something. Take a bite, as it were. <laughs> what do you say? Yes. Yes. Twenty three K today. Ah oh, breakfast here. Okay. There were two places to chill on. <laughs> oh fantastic. Hurricane ship. Fantastic place. Hello, Camilla. Hello. So we are leaving uh, our hostel. Yes. Yeah. A very good hostel. Very good hostel. Yes. We are happy. 18 euros each. Yeah. And uh, we had a good breakfast included. Yeah. And we got to know you. Oh. <laughs> For six Perfect persons. showers. I mean, got <laughs> towels also. So. Ah, what we cannot uh, complain. Complain, thank you. We are on an adventure. Yes, we are leaving Villa de Conde. Instead of walking along the 
coastal trail. We will go cross over to the Pedro de Rotes and the inland train and continue to Barcelos. It's very beautiful. Yes, it is. still happy <laughs> and we are walking it's a great day actually the sun is shining the sky is totally blue and uh, we have now left the uh, coastal oh sometimes you feel lucky when you don't need to walk along these kind of roads and you can do a crossover where you feel safe. Second breakfast. <laughs> this is like uh, ah, this is how a place normally looks like. We have the bar and coffee machines like that, and also the mandatory TV. This time with the news, but uh, often also sports. After walking along the very busy road, we finally arrived at Inland Road. It felt so good and our minds were lighting up. We are happy. We have uh, reached the Camino Portuguese Central. After walking uh, along a very busy, busy, busy road. <laughs> but now... We are back on track, so we will walk up to Rautes and then continue to Barcelos. I'm so happy that we don't need to walk along that road no more. The eucalyptus trees are in silver. Smell wonderful, yes. And they look wonderful. And I love the fragrance of eucalyptus. We learned last time that these trees are growing very fast. And that you can see if there is a young or old tree on the leaf. So you have been at the therapist? Yes. Massage, the massage bank. Yes, I will show them bench. later. Yeah. How was it? Uh, uh, excellent. excellent. You should say. <laughs> How was it? Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have any complaints? No, no it was very good. Yeah. I will show the bench. Massage bench. We had a problem with the hip, actually. Muscle cramps. Yes, but now I think we have not fixed it, but we, I think we at least can move on. I want to bring this home. <laughs> the first stone, this trip, uh, Camino. It's nice to see this.
Hi there, Pilgrim. Fantastic church. It's, uh, it's very quiet and very dark. Yeah, and very peaceful. And uh, it's also nice to be in here because you're protected from the sun and you can cool, cool down actually. Look at this. Oh, I love the countryside. I know it's nice at the coast also, but this is something else. You can hear the birds, you can smell the flowers, the trees, you can even smell the sun. Okay, Camilla, why did we change route? It was so windy and uh, we got the sand in our shoes and red eyes, <laughs> but it was beautiful, so we don't regret. No, we had two fantastic days actually along the sea. Coastal. Yes, and uh, you can say it's um, quite heavy to walk in the wind when uh, you're starting to be tired. Uh, for us it was fantastic, we had a great weather, sun and uh, uh, blue skies and okay, it was heavy wind. But uh, I also think about what happens if it starts raining or it's in bad weather. You don't have so much, you cannot go anywhere, you, uh, you, you don't have so much protection. So uh, that was a good uh, opportunity to walk over to this, uh, this trail instead. Yes, yeah. good, good choice. Uh, and we like the, to walk on this kind of roads and uh, on the countryside, see all these cornfields. The green trees and the forest and the forest we like that so that's why we choose to change route actually yes. yeah. <laughs> is that all yes. <laughs> <laughs> we also talk to the manager at the manager we also talk to the receptionist at the last um, alberg yes and she told us that it should be more or less the same uh, coming five days so that's why we decided to walk over right now and we also like to see these yellow arrows <laughs> it was good to walk on the wooden uh, foot bridges I think it's called that in English uh, nice to walk on them because it's uh, give you some uh, support when you walk actually unless we came to the sandy <laughs> bars uh, but uh, yeah, I felt almost the same. Uh, I felt almost immediately when we arrived on this trail that I was home again. <laughs> when I saw the signs, the fields, I can smell the eucalyptus trees. Uh, I don't know if I need to explain more. <laughs> Ah, this is a great sign. It tells you how far it is to the Alberg and also the evaluation. And if you go on this side, you can see Camino Fatima the same. It, uh, Camino Fatima is the trail when you're walking in the other direction. Well, wow. we have walked for about five hours, maybe. How do you feel? I'm, I'm okay, thank you. I start feeling a bit of the backpack on my shoulders. Yes. 
to uh, pick off your shoes and <laughs> uh, wiggle with your toes. <laughs> <laughs> what you mean is uh, that when we take a rest, we need to take the shoes off and give the feet some air. <laughs> After bandaging a few blisters, we continued. We had decided before starting our hike that uh, we would try to walk around 20k a day. So this day we had Pedra Ferrada as our goal. In Pedra Ferrada we found a hostel Casa de Maria. The funny thing was that we met a car that slowed down as we came walking along the street. It was like the driver was observing us and the car stopped in the road a few hundred meters from us. When we found the Casa de Maria sign, we decided to try to get the bed there. As usual, we had not pre-booked any hostel for this day. I knocked on the green door. A neighbor came out and asked us to wait. Suddenly, the car that was parked about 500 meters away from us started to drive made a U-turn and came forward us. A woman jumped out of the car. It was the hostel owner. She was very friendly and showed us around and gave us a room with a balcony, a double bed and a key to the hostel before she left us. We were completely alone in the entire hostel. I am so happy. We found us a really, really, really good place. For, to stay. We had not booked anything and the clock is now about five o'clock in the afternoon and what what we found <laughs> pool an own balcony it's like we have an own flat actually all of this for 40 euros as we had been in this village before, we knew there would be a very good restaurant quite close to another hostel, a few hundred meters away. So we were very surprised when both the hostel and the restaurant had closed. We simply had to try to find a supermercado to buy something to eat. After walking a few more kilometers, we found to our delight a grocery store that was open. That night we cooked our own food and shared a bottle of wine, glad that we had decided to change the route. This is the chef, the real chef. And what is he doing? Pasta, sausage, kilbiri, mm -hmm. tomato sauce. Ah, it will be fantastic. Hello friends. I'm here in the kitchen with a glass of wine after walking. This is a message from YouTube. If you like this video, please put a thumb up for this video and share it with your friends. And I would be happy if you will, will subscribe to the channel and support me. Thank you. Good morning. We are leaving. <laughs> What's the name? I don't remember. I was a bit tired yesterday. <laughs> okay, we are, all, we are going to Barcelos first and then maybe we continue. What do you say? We will see. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> the next day we started with light legs. We walked along the paved road which was quite busy. Now we are walking for a few minutes and the memory will come back. We are leaving Pedra Rada and uh, they are driving like crazy here.
after walking on the si sidewalks for a while along the busy roads and then you come out here oh, it's fantastic I'm very happy. For what? That we walked the coastal way for two days. Yes, I, I'm also happy for that. <laughs> then you, we can see the difference. Variation. Because I think I had thoughts of that. I, I would like it very, very much because I walked the north and, and when I come down to the sea, it, I got so much energy. But after walking two days along the sea, it was almost the same. We were satisfied. We are forest people. <laughs> <laughs> so you mean you, we don't gonna buy a boat? <laughs> no, no, never. <laughs> never a boat. <laughs> okay, never a boat. I like to fish anyway. <laughs> so I will go fishing <laughs> someday, <laughs> but not now. Now we'll let me change the view and you will see this. This is what we see when we are walking here. The mountains or the hills, if you want to call it that. The fantastic nature. Hi Camilla, how are you doing? I'm, I'm fine, thank you. We <laughs> are in Barcelos. Yes, Barcelos. <laughs> and uh, it has been a calm and nice walk to Barcelos. Yes, perfect. Yes, not so hilly. No. Some small decent, but not so many. 23 degrees. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> now we're gonna try to find some place to eat. It's a tight bridge actually when the cars are meeting <laughs> they almost touch me so you have to be careful so your backpack dog uh, gets stuck at uh, what you call it on the car <laughs> the mirrors the side mirrors on the cars
we took along a lunch break in Barcelos, which is a quite big town. In Barcelos there is a lot to see and experience, and here you can also find equipment if you need to buy new or are missing something. Lunch time. <laughs> this is how it looks like when Camilla is ordering. This is mine. And <laughs> this is Camilla's three large <laughs> sandwiches. <laughs> this was a funny sandwich. It contains uh, ham, cheese, tomato, lettuce, mayo, and walnuts. <laughs> It was very good. <laughs> Maybe it's me who is stupid. It can be so, because sometimes I am really stupid. But what about this? You should have this to dry your, your fingers with. But it's, it's not possible, because the, the, the surface of the, the paper is flat or whatever you should call it. <laughs> it's not soft. So I don't know. Was it better? Walking out from Barcelos. Uh, next stop is nine kilometers. Recoleta or something like that. After lunch, we decided to continue for a few more kilometers before trying to find a bed in an alberg we had stayed at before, which is out in the countryside. Many different directions. <laughs> Shall we I, go up? Yeah, I wonder, <laughs> I wonder what we have here. Ooh, we have climbed some high meter. Yeah. And, uh, the sun is Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hot, really hot now. <laughs> We're going up, up, up. Yes, I will show you. We came from there. And we will walk here. 188 kilometers left to Santiago. Let's go! We are still climbing and I remember how beautiful it was when I turned around. 500 meters left to an alberg. Alberg Peregrino in Tamel San Pedro is a really nice alberg, which I would like to recommend. It is in a small village where there is a restaurant, but then there is not much else. So if you want to cook your own food, you have to bring it. Here is the wooden cross. We are still climbing. Several meters. I think you're doing it really well. our alberg for today. 
It's a municipal a bag. Camilla and me got the lower beds. Here we stay tonight. It's perfect. Really nice. Albert, it's a municipal and it costs five euro each. Here we have to use our own stuff. Uh, they have a pillow. You can see that one there. I have my silk cover with me. Also, so um, Camilla has the same. And she is now showering, then we have to wash. It has been a good day, very warm day, and uh, much hilly actually in the end of the day, the last hour. And now I will go and have a beer. The start today was along this road and it's very busy. When sharing room with other hikers, we tried to be considerate. This night we got to experience the opposite. I don't think you can be blamed for not being considerate when you're coughing or snoring in your sleep. But you should think about how you treat others. Or at least you should want to learn how to behave. Yes, we need to say something about uh, <laughs> the, the last uh, night we stayed at uh, an alberg. We were nine in our room. Okay. Yes, and I think some of those people have not been at an alberg so many times. No, <laughs> I should not. Uh, we, we will not complain because we are not uh, perfect in any way. But I will do a comment on it. This evening some people had a few beers and that is quite common. It usually quiets down around 10 and so it did also this time. Then in the early morning someone goes to the toilet and leaves the door to the dormitory and the toilet open and stands and relieves himself. It sounds very loud in the dormitory. Not so nice. A little later an alarm rings. It's still early in the morning. The person who had set the alarm does not turn it off, but he sits up and looks around for a while. The alarm continues to sound. Then this person starts to repack his things in different plastic bags. For those who have not heard how plastic bags sound in an otherwise quiet room, I will tell you that it makes a lot of noise. If there is an idea to try to sleep further, I think you know the answer. Uh, I think... If you stay in an alberg with uh, nine other people in the same sleeping room, it can be good to shut the alarm off at 4.30. You should be aware of that you have woken up the whole sleeping room. And uh, if you have plastic bags, don't sit on the bend and uh, start packing or looking for your stuff. Take your stuff and go outside the sleeping area. And uh, in the morning, if you want to start earlier than all others, I have a recommendation. Pack the day before and sleep in your walking clothes as much, much as you can. Then you can, uh, in the morning, when you wake up, take your stuff with you out from the sleeping area and start packing your bags outside. Then the other people who is in the bed trying to sleep could continue to sleep. Especially if you want to go around five or six in the morning. Okay, to end this subject, what do you want to say? I think you should not disturb each other if you don't have to 
and show some consideration. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Good, good point there. <laughs> It's a new day. I think it was raining tonight. It's like, I don't know what it's like. It's calm. The trees are following the wind and the sun is start to heat uh, the temperature up. It's been a little chill this morning. And the birds are talking to each other. What is the best way to start a day? <laughs> With a kiss. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. 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 Oh, we have just eaten breakfast, and I tried, as a global trotter I am, <laughs> to speak Portuguese with the help of Google Translate. I should order dupio espresso, no mes por copo. Two espresso in the same cup. She looked at me, puzzled, and then she said in English, do you want it in the same cup? Two, two of them. It's common that you meet dogs and they are barking at you <laughs> as soon as they hear your footsteps. And there, there are a lot of them, actually. But uh, the most of them are behind bars. This day has started so well. I feel that people are so nice. Hikers, locals, everyone, actually. Everyone. What do you find? I don't know which one I will take. <laughs> okay, take I both. Know. Do you want uh, water more? Yes. One water, yeah. one water. So okay. three euro. Three euros? Yes. I don't know what this is. Okay. So I, I, uh, mm. I, I know <laughs> I what don't know that. I know what this is. <laughs> <laughs> People are very friendly here. The locals help us. We have walked in the wrong direction. A woman came up to us and told us that we did. So now we are on the right way again. We're taking a rest. Is it always fun to walk? 
along the roads? No, not always. Should it be fun all the time? No, I don't think so. I think it's nice to have time to think. Things that are thought to an end. And for that you need time. At least I do. For this day we had Ponte de Lima as our goal. It's a little bigger city. I think if you want to take a rest day, Ponte de Lima is a perfect place for that. When we have visited this town it has been markets and feasts and um, we have also found nice restaurants and you can also find a very good hotel if you want. This time we stayed at the I think it's pronounced like this, Posada Juventude, which means hostel, a few minutes outside from the city center. Okay, we are at another hostel this time. So, follow me. On this side we have lockers. And we also have that on this side. And then we have the <laughs> woman, the most white boss. <laughs> so here is the room. And as you can see, it's a nice little room with two beds. I think they have had bunk beds here before. Uh, but uh, now it is a double room. For 35 euros we got this. And we got a discount of 10% because we are pilgrims. I think this is really great. Uh, we don't need to use our own equipment because it's pillow and uh, we have towels and uh, yeah, everything we need actually. Uh, we uh, share bathroom with others. Yeah, I think that's all. Good morning! <laughs> we got our uh, breakfast bags from the receptionist. They have made us two so we can start a bit earlier than the breakfast was served. That was nice of them. Yes, so it's uh, a bit chilly outside. 
I think it can be around 17, 18 degrees maybe. Yeah, I think so. And a little bit warmer if you are in the sun. We are in uh, Ponte de Lima and we are going to Ruby Eyes today. 20k maybe something. Do you have something to add? <laughs> no, no, I'm hungry. <laughs> okay, let's go and eat breakfast. Take two. <laughs> okay, what's in the bag, Camilla? Breakfast. Breakfast. Uh, bread. Uh, ham and cheese. Some chocolate. Uh, good. Uh, I think uh, an apple. Something we don't want to eat. <laughs> and uh, a muffin. Ah, perfect. And this is the view from our breakfast table. The old bridge and the walking street in Ponte de Lima. the old bridge you can watch over here also this is Ponte de Lima Centrum very nice restaurants behind that big building have been climbing for a while and the surface is not so flat it's a lot of stones and but I think anyway that uh, nature is great 
we're walking quite near a big big road with a busy traffic but you can see it here the trail is really good marked with yellow arrows and cross if you should not go in that direction I think the temperature can be around 22 to 24 degrees Celsius maybe it's perfect it's the perfect weather to hike To go to Rubiales, we had to climb a few hundred meters up to Cruz de Peregrino and Alto La Birulla. The last stop before the climb through the forest begins. There is a café. Café Cuna Nunes. I think it's a good idea to take a break there and fill up your water bottles before you start going uphill. In my opinion, it's this climb really tough and some parts very steep, but the nature is fantastic. The cafe we just left is the last one for a while and we are starting a climb uphill and uh, I can give you a tip to stay there or just fill your bottles of water they sell uh, they, they sell <laughs> the most things it's a small place but they have a lot of things it's like a small shop. Mini supermarket. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they have a wine, coffee, ah, what you need. And the owner, a lady, I think she she is really nice. We are walking and talking. <laughs> like a walking talking. Walkie talkie. <laughs> <laughs> we um, talk about the prices at the cafes in the small villages they are very what do you say cheap. yeah cheap we bought a lot of things we paid not, not even five euro for coffee cola zero uh, a big cake and chocolate and chips and a banana <laughs> <laughs> yeah and Cola Zero, you said yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of things for for small money. Said something. As far further the day goes by, the backpack is weighing more and more. <laughs> it's getting heavier, <laughs> and we choose to climb the worst part <laughs> in the middle of the day. <laughs> the, ah. sun is <laughs> <laughs> ah, and the sun is yeah. on the top. Yes. Challenge. <laughs> <laughs> it's uphill. Up 
<laughs> it's crazy. It's good for the heart. Yes. Ooh, this hill was tough. But we will continue. I am the fast hiker. I'm the slow hiker. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a difference of how long our legs are. If we look in the medical app at our iPhone, we can see that how, how far we, we go in each step. And I can show you later what Camilla has and what my is. So we have to adjust a bit if we should walk together. <laughs> The Portuguese jungle. Yes, and the smell. The fragrance of eucalyptus. The road is getting smaller and smaller and uh, it looks like we I should... I think it's uh, dried out the um, river. Ah, yes. <laughs> uh, uh, there's a lot of stones. It's not so easy to walk with a backpack on the shoulder. But I see the yellow arrow, so we are on the right way. After walking uphill for a while, I found that I lost my tripod for the camera. So I had to go back a couple of kilometers. I couldn't find a part for my camera, so I had to swallow my annoyance and go back uphill again and add those extra kilometers to my free distance book. I call it that because if someone asks me how far I have walked, I never know. If I had a GPS that measured all my steps, I would know. But I don't. I don't really care how far I walk. The distance are important when I calculate the day's stage. But otherwise, it will be as far as it will be. So I add those kilometers to my mental distance book. I lost my tripod on the camera, so I had to walk back. But after kilometers, I turned around again and walked uphill. It lost. It lo I lost it. And now I'm trying to catch up with Camilla, who is in front. Ah, let's go. Still going uphill. Oh, oh. Here's a really tough section. Very difficult path. Well, there are many stones. Okay, I don't know if this is hiking, more feel like climbing. And here comes one more, even steeper. It 
it's, it's rock climbing. Look. Ooh. Look at this. I should turn around and show you. What the nature. I'm only halfway up through this path. It's really heavy. And here is the Cruz of the Muertes, I think it's called. Oh! I think this is the toughest part on the whole Portuguese Camino from Porto. Mela, how is it? Tough. Yes. Catching the breath. We still have a pot to climb, but it's not so much. It's a really nice view. And we have a benches over here, so we, we will go there. Oh. I'm really tired. The shadow. Now the fast hiker is so fast. <laughs> I stumbled forward to this uh, bench. I'm really tired. <laughs> How about you? Yes, I'm tired and very, very sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> Good work. Really good work. We made it. <laughs> Who said it was easy to go down? <laughs> no, it's not. No. Take it easy. It's really up and down, up and down. Just open our mouth and the grapes are falling. <laughs> Into <laughs> mouth. I'm standing here waiting. Oh. <laughs> if we're lucky it became wine. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> You're really funny. <laughs> how how long do you have to wait? <laughs> I want wine, but I have to wait till the evening. Yes. 
to dinner. I cannot stand here waiting for the grapes to be wine. <laughs> it's lunch time. Mm. Chicken. The plate looks like this when it arrives. <laughs> <laughs> and I was very hungry, so I started eating a lot fast. And uh, the uh, man who owes this, he went out in his garden and got this. I got a Superbock, the Portuguese is Cerveza beer. It's good. <laughs> and uh, there is the, over there is the grill master. Because this chicken is really good. Oh, so nice with the break. And the fun was that we met two Sweden, two Swedish ladies here. I mean, just here. In the middle of nowhere. In the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Fantastic. Ah, <laughs> uh, we found friends from Sweden. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> we're really happy <laughs> to talk Swedish for a while. <laughs> It's uh, not often you see Swedes on the trail. I think this is exciting. We have decided to walk uh, at least one more hour and the clock will be around hmm, somewhere between five and six in the afternoon when we arrive somewhere and we don't know yet because we have no we have no guidebooks, we have no maps. Uh, so we will see if we have a bed tonight. Cross your fingers for us. When we arrived in Ruby Eyes, we went to a hostel and asked if they had a bed for us, and we were lucky. The owner showed us where we could wash our clothes and where we could find something to eat. So we showered, washed, and then it was off to the restaurant next door. We got a room in a private hostel, private casa. <laughs> uh, it cost us 35 euros. Yes. And we have our own bathroom and shop. Very nice. And the owner, she is... She was extremely nice. She yeah. was called Sonja. And we could call her anytime. Yes. Um, <laughs> so you can wash your clothes in a machine if you want for free euro. But um, I will go outside and do it with my hands. <laughs> <laughs> When we came back, the owner had moved our clothes to a better drying place, where she saw that our clothes were in the shadow. I never cease to be amazed at the incredible hospitality and care that all the hostel owners give to us hikers. <laughs> Whew. Long day... What do you say? Long day's walk to the night. <sighs> Today... It was not my day. Uh, I tried to film. I lost the... Uh, uh, what do you call it? Tripod. So I have to go back. Branches to try to grab my backpack. And uh, when I try, tried to film, it was uh, <laughs> in the way or something like that. I 
stumbled on the stones when I walked. Yeah, and the battery went low, and uh, I had wrong uh, uh, alternative position on my cameras. The sound was not great. I had the microphone for too close to my mouth, and I always so. Please be kind to me. <laughs> Subscribe. <laughs> then I will be happy. Look at this. The first cycle. New morning, Ruby Eyes. We have just eaten breakfast at uh, this place. And uh, it's time to walk. morning we are on our way <laughs> we are on our way again uh, Camilla is hiding behind my <laughs> backpack <laughs> uh, we start from Ruby Eyes and uh, I think it's many more hikers starting late also we are the clock is uh, around 8.30 We start with a small problem today We have a hip problem One of Camilla's hips <laughs> are not friendly today <laughs> with us No so Never friendly, but it's um, more <laughs> kaput <laughs> this day yeah. So uh, just now she's not carrying her backpack so we Got the leg going, <laughs> and um, you you should you need a masseur. It's a very old Roman bridge. Yes, and think that the Romans have gone over this bridge, and the stones are still here. Oh, amazing! It's not big, but. It's an original bridge from the Roman time. Medieval. Yes. So, Camilla is back on the track. The backpack is back on her back. <laughs> I like that. It's not always you walk on paved ground and in the forest or at the coastline. Sometimes you have to walk along the roads. So be careful. This is also a Camino road. <laughs> Can we go? We are walking not so far from uh, road construction. <laughs> we can hear the <laughs> motors from the from the caterpillars and other vehicles that they use. And we are go walking here <laughs> in a fantastic nature. It feels strange. I feel good. Ooh. I feel as I should. <laughs> I'm not so good at singing. <laughs> I 
I think this day has started well. We have had our first stop, second breakfast, a double espresso and some fresh orange juice. Yes, it's very good. Yes. Good and expensive. <laughs> it was a bit expensive, but it was worth it. I think this is an old Roman road. I don't know, but it feels like it. Like the nature have created this path. They're so helpful. I um, took my sock off because I am starting to get a blister here. And uh, the nice woman came in front of me immediately and asked if I was okay and if I needed something. Hmm. That's the Camino spirit. I will put this on so it not will be a nasty blister. I think this is called cobblestone to walk on cobblestones it's not so easy but the nature is great even though the road is wide the pilgrims walk on the side of the road because it's hard to walk on those stones I asked for another material to walk on and I got it. I don't know if this is better or worse. I can maybe go on this side. Yeah, we have walked for see three and a half hour with a few stops between a few stops and uh, it's a similar terrain to walking and it's lack of cafes so we need some water and maybe lunch now. We are in the lunch place in the industrial area. There are plenty of guests here. I think it's truckers. I think it's truckers. Ah, yeah, truckers, yes. Okay, we are in Arau. Arau, yes. We uh, have just had lunch. Yes. Yeah. We have just have lunch. <laughs> yes. We have just have lunch. <laughs> it was very very good. Yes, and when you when you're walking from uh, Aru from uh, thank you to Valencia, there is lack of cafes, and when you arrive in Arau, it's easy to miss the restaurant in the beginning because their arrows are in the direction to the right. And the cafe and restaurant is on the opposite side. So, if you go further, 
Then it is a cafe about 300 meters later. And after that it takes some time before you get something to eat or drink. So I can just say that we are very pleased with the service and the food on the restaurant. Plenty of food, less money, good service. Yes. yes. <laughs> good food. <laughs> <laughs> or your stomach is full. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> then we are happy. We were lucky, we had a good receptionist. Before we asked her, she handed over this map and said that we should do the, go upstairs and sleep for a while and then go out and do the tour today without backpacks. Then you can go direct to the bridge tomorrow. So that's what we are going to do. It's a really nice wall. The water runs down at the wall. Uh, all three of the Portuguese roads meet here in Valencia. As we was informed by the receptionist at the hostel. It's very commercial here. It's a lot of stores of about towels, carpets and uh, baby clothes. See over here, it is for the Spanish side. Two years over there. And that's is the bridge where we will cross tomorrow. Okay, I am sitting here on the top of the <laughs> top of the top gun. No, I'm sitting here on the top of the castle and I have my Camilla with me, of course. <laughs> uh, we will soon leave uh, Portugal. Yes. So we will summarize Portugal a bit. What do you think about Portugal? I think it's a very beautiful country. Yeah. It feels sad to leave and everything has been perfect. Yeah. The food, the wine, the service, the weather yeah. and the path. And the culture and the historical places and the sea and the coastal line. Wow. And the walk has been fantastic. The old buildings, yeah. I love them. Uh, so we will come back to Portugal. I hope so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Tomorrow <laughs> we leave Portugal and uh, moves into Spain. Yes. Continue our journey to Santiago. Mm.